Joe Ruth needs some inspiration credit. PA chroniclers of the Ashes like to talk in epoch terms of a series being lost in a single day, session or even an over. Test cricket's greatest rivalry loves an implosion, a power shift or a turning point. England will spend the rest of their time in Adelaide fighting this sense that the script is already being written by Australian hands. The way it works is that if England lose this second test, it will be blamed on Joe Root's decision on Saturday to put Australia into bat. If they lose the series, it will be marked down as the Great Adelaide Aberration. Reductionist or not, history returns to the scene of a calamity for an easy explanation, which then sits in the record books like a stain. This is highly convenient for those who need a big reason to hide behind, but highly damaging to the person who made the call, in this case Ruth, who was left needing a heroic captain's innings to stop England going 20 down on the road to Perth. No, he wouldn't do anything differently, said Trevor Bayliss, the England coach. It's well documented that one of our challenges is taking wickets on flatter wickets. So Joe wanted to give our guys the best opportunity to take 20 wickets. It didn't work out, although I thought we bowled pretty well. Look, it wasn't an easy decision. It wasn't taken lightly. But for us to win games, you want to take 20 wickets. We bowled pretty well and didn't get the results we deserved. Whatever the rationale, the outcome is not in dispute. England could not take 10 Australian wickets before it was their turn to bat. They needed 5 sessions and 149 overs to put 8 Australians back in the shed. About the most painful ending to such a gamble is to see the opposition declare, as Australia did on 4,428. After a big bash finish in which Nathan Leone struck a six and Sean Marsh, who has had eight goes at nailing down a place in Australia's side, left the pitch unbeaten on 126. Sean Marsh dominates England's bowlers credit P.A. Leon's wallop off Craig over and high over fine leg was one of many snapshots of supposed calamity for England. Another was Alastair Cook and James Vince lunging for the same catch in the gully and ending up tangled on the grass, next to the unclaimed ball. Every time England looked to have gained some control over Australia's innings along came another infernal partnership. Peter Hanscombe, Tim Payne, Pat Cummins and even Leon stuck around with Marsh for significant periods. Cummins, way too talented to bat number 9, scored 42 in Brisbane and 44 here. What hope do you have if the number 9 can stroke the ball around with such smooth rhythms and soft hands? Throughout this Adelaide test, with its pink ball, 50,000-plus crowds and superb amphitheatre feel, there has been a biting sense of cruelty stalking England. Plenty will say they brought it on themselves by breaking a cardinal rule and inviting Australia to bat. For England's bowlers, the false promise of having Australia 2095 mutated Paney into a long struggle to stop Steve Smith's men piling up a crushing first innings total. Everything you have had since Australia were 2095 and will for the rest of this test has been a recovery mission by England and attempt to stay in the game. The series, even, England's Ashes schedule fixtures, dates and times naturally every pundit in Adelaide has been trying to find out why Root put Australia in. The best guess is that he was swayed by two earlier pink ball test wins by the team who bowled first. Another theory is that Root was trying to subvert Australia's main strengths. Knowing Australia possessed the superior bowling attack, the theory goes, he was hoping to knock out their two best batsmen, Smith and David Warner, and so set the tone. In the same he partially succeeded. Warner was caught behind for 47 and Smith bowled for 40 after having his cage properly rattled by Stuart Broad and Jimmy Anderson. But then you looked at the scoreboard just after dinner, which is the new T4428 declared, Marsh 126 not out, and Leon still there, after he had swung like Babe Ruth at six short balls before connecting with the seventh and lifting it 95 meters onto a cameraman's sunroof. Nathan Leon slogs the ball onto the roof credit PA there are passages of play in Ashes cricket when Mirth creeps in. Mirth and shot in Florida. A team's suffering becomes comical. England were in this territory. The whole weekend was building towards darkness falling and Australia's quicks charging through the white glare of the floodlights, which lend the pink ball an extra sheen and menace. On Sunday night and for the whole of Monday, intense pressure has been heaped on England to claw back Australia's total of 442 in a test the experts believe gave them their best chance of winning between Brisbane and Perth. For Root, a place is reserved alongside Nasser Hussain at the Gabba in 2002 when he elected to bowl at Australia and led them a mass 3,642 at stumps. But anyone who thinks Root's big call alone explains England's predicament on Sunday and Monday ignores the golf in bowling attacks in Australian conditions especially England's lack of hostile pace.
In day-night cricket, Root could only hope the darkest hour comes before the dawn.